Financial Literacy for Kids, Part 3, Borrowing versus Saving. Today, we are going to learn about borrowing versus saving when it comes to financial literacy. Have you ever wanted to buy something but did not have the money? In order to get the money, you have two choices, borrow it or save it. Frankie Finance is here to help us talk about borrowing and saving. She wants to buy a new game console. So, let's look at both options to see which one makes the most sense. Starting with borrowing. Borrowing means you take something and use it temporarily. Like when you borrow a book from a friend and then return it after you have read it. Your friend expects you to return the book in good condition, and they hope to borrow something you have in the future. Sometimes what you borrow is called a loan, and the person or group you are borrowing from is called the lender. Lenders expect to be paid back in full and will sometimes charge interest, which is an additional fee you have to pay in order to have the privilege of borrowing the money in the first place. Saving, on the other hand, happens when you set money aside for future use and do not spend it immediately. There are lots of different ways to save. Some people set a certain amount of money aside every week or month, while others decide on a specific percentage of their money and set it aside. You might already be saving money, either in a piggy bank at home or in a savings account at a bank. Creating a savings plan is a great idea if you want to buy something. Let's help our friend Frankie Finance decide how to buy the new game console. The total cost is $500. Each week, Frankie gets $20 as an allowance. So she decides to save half of that amount, or $10, every week, until she has enough money to buy the game console. Let's calculate how long it will take her to save the $500. There are about 52 weeks in a year. So if Frankie saves $10 per week, it will take her 50 weeks to save up enough money. That is almost a whole year of saving. If Frankie does not want to wait that long, she could also borrow the money. Her parents offer to be her lender, expecting her to make monthly payments on the loan. The loan payment includes the principal, or original amount she will borrow, plus interest, which her parents set at 1%, or 0 0.01. Frankie would also have to make payments to her parents over a specific time period, which is called the term of the loan. Her parents want her to pay back the loan in one year. So, how much money would Frankie need to pay back exactly? Let's look at this handy mathematical formula to find out. I equals PRT. In other words, interest equals principal times rate times time. In Frankie's case, this formula would be 500p times 0.01r times 1t, which equals $5i. This means that Frankie would need to pay her parents back an amount of $505 once she adds in the additional cost of interest. What would you do if you were Frankie? Save the money for a year and wait to buy the game console? Or borrow the money to get the console right now and spend the rest of the year paying it back plus interest? When you get older, you may want to buy something like a house, a car, or you may need money to pay for college. You can save your money or apply for a loan to help you pay for these things. Sometimes, like in the case of an emergency, you might not have a choice and must borrow money. No matter the circumstance, 
you can still use what you have learned to practice good financial literacy and weigh the pros and cons of borrowing versus saving. Want to practice these skills right now? Print out our lesson plan, Borrowing versus Saving, on learnbright.org. Hope you had fun learning with us. Visit us at learnbright.org for thousands of free resources and turnkey solutions for teachers and homeschoolers.